In the last 12 years, I've worked with over 800 producers, and I wanna give you this one kind of easy tip that has unlocked a whole new level of quality in their mixes. So Moose, put 10 minutes on the clock, and let's do this. This is why we can't have nice things. Moose, you already this up and only put five minutes on the clock. So stay with me here, we're gonna move fast. Here's the first example. We have a vocal track with a lot of other instruments playing at the same time. And I wanna talk about a very detailed approach to EQing all of these sounds together. But I'm not here to show you the result. Look at my EQ settings, how I made my mix sound amazing. That won't help you. Instead, I wanna give you the actual process, the step-by-step -step framework and approach that you can use to consistently get the best sounding results. Okay, let's first just establish that great mixes have great balance, and balance can be achieved several different ways. Think general volume balance or placing sounds around the stereo field. We can even create dynamic balance using things like compressors. But for the scope of this video, I wanna talk about using EQ to create balance in our mix. Now keep in mind, I would typically reach for an EQ after I've considered and potentially applied the other three tools I just mentioned. So step one is asking yourself, what is the focus of this section and are any other sounds still competing with that focus? For me, the vocal's my priority. That's gonna be the focus. Now I have a couple other elements that might still be competing with the vocal because I chose to mix them a little bit louder. They're important in the overall mix too. This would be like my mid bass, the piano, this arpeggiated lead. Let's focus on getting this lead and the vocal right because they do play on top of each other in both my verse and chorus. This takes us to the second step, which is very important because this is where a lot of EQ tutorials will steer us kind of in the wrong direction. So what you wanna ask yourself is this. Is the overlap and competition between these instruments a consistent and static problem or a changing and dynamic problem? Here's what I mean. Many of us have been taught to solve this problem by just scooping out some volume in the lead and this creates a pocket for the vocal. Technically, yes, it solved the problem, but it also just created a new one at the same time. What happens when the vocal stops between each phrase? Does this EQ still need to be on? Or what about when the vocal gets louder or quieter from word to word, phrase to phrase, section to section? This 5 dB dip I use just magically works for them all? Or how about the fact that the vocal is changing in frequency as the singer sings different notes? My EQ just stays at the same frequency because I thought that's how you solve the problem. Do you see how this is trying to solve a dynamic problem with a static solution. This can result in you often over-processing and sucking the life out of an instrument when it's just not needed. For this case, we're gonna use a dynamic EQ. Now there are many plugins that can do this. I personally use Sooth 2 to solve these problems and I drop it on my lead, set the sidechain to be my vocal, and now you'll see that the plugin is lowering my synth based on the changing dynamics of the vocal itself. And I could adjust how drastic it is, I could change the resolution to be more detailed, or broad, I could ignore certain frequencies. It gives me a lot of control. It's an amazing plugin, but it's also an expensive plugin. So let me show you a free option, which also gives you an incredible result with just a little bit less control. This is called The Masker. And if I have this correct, it was actually made by Italian students, like as a school project. And they put a bunch of stuff on their website for free. It's insane quality. I will put a link in the description below because they deserve a ton of credit here. But as you can see, I can set this up just like Soothe using the side chain, and it's gonna give me a very similar detailed response. It perfectly ducks my synth around the vocal frequencies. And let me mention, this approach here is not like a vocal mixing trick. This could be used on anything. You could use this dynamic EQ with a sidechain to fit two synths together or fitting drums with synths. It would be the same exact approach. Now, as great as this is, we're still not done yet because we're forgetting to ask ourselves another important question, which takes us to step three. Where in the stereo field does this competition exist? Let's jump to a different sound and I'm gonna use the mid bass and piano for this example. We're gonna need to go one step further here for these instruments because my intention was to duck these instruments around the vocal. And my vocal is pretty much mono in the mix. It's right down the middle. But if we listen to the bass and piano, 
they're not. They're out here, they're stereo sounds. So this means that yes, they are competing with the vocal in the middle, but are they fighting with the vocal out here on the sides? No, because the vocal doesn't exist out here. It's like, why would I want my EQ just randomly ducking around nothing? I'm literally losing potential volume and power out of two of my really important layers. So check this out. For this scenario, we are gonna flip this to a mid-side EQ. Now a typical EQ like your stock EQ or Pro Q, they have this mid-side mode and it basically just allows you to independently EQ the mono portion of a signal from the side stereo portion of the signal. So for this example, I would only wanna lower the mono or mid portion of those competing frequencies like this. But because this is a dynamic issue, which we established earlier, I can use mid side mode on a dynamic EQ. I'm gonna use Sooth 2 again for this because I actually don't think that Masker has mid side mode built in. I could be wrong, but you could always get there by combining other mid side plugins and make it work. But for now, I'm gonna shift this here to mid only and it's only going to duck the volume in the mono portion. My sides remain completely unaffected. Think about how precise this is. It's solving my exact intention. Where this ice cream scoop of an EQ, it wasn't. It was actually creating other unnecessary problems along the way. Look, quality mixes are made from quality decisions. And these three steps are a really good foundation to EQing any competing sounds in a mix. If you like this one, I already have the next topic picked for you. There's always more to talk about. So tap the video on screen and let's keep this going.